Hey guys, what's up? Um, I've actually had quite a few people uh, watching my videos that have asked me about my uh, engine build. And uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd give you guys some tips and tricks on uh, how to build a truck engine for a Bronco. And, uh, you know, when you're building a truck engine, it's the exact opposite of building a race car engine. So with the race car engine, you want to build something that's high RPM and, you know, not a lot of download torque and off the line throttle response because a race car engine builds all its power at the high RPM ranges. So, but with a truck or like the early Bronco, you want to build all your power down low, like low mid range. And, um, you know, like lots of throttle response and my truck, uh, I'm running a 351 Windsor and these are some of the components I've have my truck, but uh, I've had like four four different engines in my truck. I've actually had a couple of race car engines, and that's kind of like, uh, you know, when I was younger, I used to always think that, you know, if it's a race car part, it's it's better, you know, it's faster, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, that's before I kind of did some more research studying and over the years and realized that actually the, the some of the best performance I ever had on my truck was like stock components. You know, are very close to stock, you know, not... Um, I have a phone ring here. All right, guys, sorry about that. Got a phone call. I'm working right now. Um, okay, so I, I currently have a 351 in my in my truck. Kind of lost where I was at, but uh, so the first thing you got to do is you got to select a, bo a block. And uh, I currently have a, a 351 Windsor. It's an F4 TE roller block, and you can tell that right there with the the stamp on it. I mean, that is the most desired 351. It's not as strong as some of the earlier ones, but it has a roller cam, and that's what you want. You want a roller cam. So any sort of, like, Mustang 5.0 or Explorer, you know, if I actually had to go the 302 route, I'd probably use an Explorer block. You know, it's guaranteed roller cam, and it's the latest. You know, it depends if you want to go fuel injection or, or carbureted, but, um, yeah, if you can go, you definitely want to go the roller block, and, and you can tell that by the spider right here. And, uh, Roller lifters uh, dramatically reduce internal friction, which will free up horsepower. And then also, plus the flat tap of cams, the oil, modern oil is not, um, there's not enough zinc in modern oil now to, to, to protect a flat tap of cam, so they, they end up rounding off and wearing off really, really fast. So if you're going to go with an older style flat tap of cam, you need to get like a zinc additive. Just because all the oil they sell now doesn't have zinc and the reason why is that the zinc uh, clogs up the Cadillac converters, so that's why they, they reduce the amount of zinc in the oil. But uh, okay, so okay, so the next thing is once you pick, figure out a block, you know, either like Mustang 5.0 or uh, 351, if you can get it, it's way better than the the 302 blocks. Uh, they can handle more power, but for us, we're not we're not we're not throwing a lot of power out. We're, it's a truck. We're trying to build low RPM and torque. So I mean, really, any block should do because it's it's not it's it's a very mild build. So. All right, so for me, I'm running the stock lower block, the stock bottom end, and, uh, you know, stock roller block, bottom end, and uh, I'm actually running uh, stock pistons. So, I mean, this, this would be considered more of a flat top piston right here, and this is going to raise your compression, but at the same time, it's going to be harder for you to control detonation. So, um, I actually chose to have the stock pistons because... I wanted to be able to use, uh, even though I do have aluminum heads, and I'll, I'll describe that in a little bit. Well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> with aluminum heads, you can kind of get away with higher compression. Uh, but I still actually wanted the stock, I'm looking for the stock dome pistons, a picture of those. Um, maybe that's a picture of it, let's see that. Okay, I see, I see these are dished right here. Those, I actually got hyperkinetics, or hyper, yeah, I can't even know how to pronounce that, but. So I have these pistons right here, and, um. So it's a little bit it's a little bit lower compression, but I did that because I want to be able to run 87 octane gas. I mean, I don't want it to be a problem if I can't find the right gas. I don't want any sort of detonation or pinging. Um, because I'm not trying to squeeze every ounce of power out of my truck. It's like my truck completely hauls ass. It, it's there's no joke. It, it it's insanely fast. I'll show you a, a picture, or maybe you guys have seen my other videos. You can see it. It's a fuel injected 351 uh, roller, L rock heads and. Okay, so now we have like block selection done. Um, let's talk about uh, heads. So, I mean, a stock pair of uh, cast iron heads will work. 
like I said, this is a truck engine, so it doesn't. You're not going to be running a high RPM, so you don't need a lot of airflow. So, but for me, I actually uh, I have these Edelbrock heads, and I actually I, I have the E Street heads, and I mean they make two. They're, they're almost identical heads, but this one doesn't really support a high lift roller cam. So, but because we're not going to be doing a radical race, you know, drag racing cam. It doesn't make a difference, so you might as well just get these cheaper heads. So, uh, let's, let's click on that real quick. Okay, so I'll tell you what the ones I have. I got the uh, the 170C intake runner head with the 190 valve. Now, with a low RPM engine, and if you want throttle response and torque, you basically want to have a really small intake runner where it says 170 cc right there. You want you basically want velocity. You want quick airflow going through your engine, and actually that velocity is going to give you the throttle response and low end torque that you need. So also I I, de I decided I wanted the, I wanted the small valves because these these um, these larger valves can choke out the engine. Not really choke it out, but they can allow it can slow down the velocity. You know, it can actually make your car bog offline. So, what you want is you want something small and fast. You know, because you're making, you're trying to make all your power down low. So, I wanted the smallest valves possible with the smallest intake runner. So these are the heads I <coughs> chose, and yeah, my my truck completely hauls ass. Uh, what they what do they say? They say like um, these things aren't for roller cams, but. See, use for hydraulic roller flat tap camshaft, 550 lift max, not compatible with hydraulic roller camshafts. Well, they are compatible with roller cams, as long as you're using the stock roller cam. The problem is, the re they had to come back with this later and put all this in there, because people were running race cams with these heads, and the valve springs and all this stuff, the components weren't strong enough to handle these massive racing cams, with high lift cams and long duration and all that stuff. So, if you're running the stock roller cam, I'm running the F4TE roller cam, which is uh, the same cam they put in the Explorer. So, this they, the F4TE roller cam is the same, it's the 351 roller cam, but it's the same cam they also put in the uh, 5.0 Explorer. Um, okay, so, yeah, in my truck hauls ass. Okay, so the next thing that we do to uh, be... Uh, Intake selection here. So, um, you know, when, you, when you're buying an intake, man, you basically want to match all these components. When you're looking for is components that make power from off idle to like 5,500 RPM. But the, the, the key is off idle. You don't want something that starts at like 1,500 RPM. You want it to start at like off idle because that's going to give you the most torque and throttle response. So typically when it, when it's, when it starts at 1,500 RPM, that usually means, means the runners are larger. And they're, they're designed to, to flow more air at the top end. And when your air is moving slower, it bogs, especially at low RPM. You, you don't want to have any sort of bogging off idle or, or low RPM. So try to stay away from the racing stuff. Okay, so I mean, if you're running a carburetor, I'd probably, uh, I mean, I'm kind of torn between the RPM. I mean, I, I would prefer, the, the former I think is the best, but the problem is if you're running a carburetor, you want to keep your carburetor kind of away from the engine because you're trying to prevent vapor lock issues with the carburetor. I mean, I may never be on vapor locking, but if you, this is probably my, that or you got to run it like one of those uh, uh, thermo spacers to prevent the heat from getting into your carburetor to prevent gas from boiling. But uh, these RPM, this is kind of, it starts at 1500, so kind of, I like the only benefit, the only reason I even choose this is because of the uh, space. There's like a gap between the manifold that allows cool air to get underneath it. So in theory, that could keep your cool your carburetor cooler. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I've actually had them both on my on my truck, and I, I did actually like the performer better because it gave better throttle response. Um, but like I said, I had more heart, more trouble controlling the. Well, actually, when it was carbureted, my car was carbureted. I had more trouble controlling vapor lock. Yeah, I did actually have a thermo. Uh, what's it called? A philharmonic, or I can't, I can't even pronounce that. The uh, that plastic spacer, the carb spacer. Um, okay, so, but I'm actually running intake uh, EFI right now. So, 
Um, if I was running a 302, I'd probably be running a uh, Ford Explore 5.0 intake. Okay, so if I was running the uh, Explore, I'd probably be running these in one of these intakes right here. Or the five, if I was running the 5.0 302 engine, I'd be running one of these intakes. So really, this is basically an F. Uh, this is a GT40 intake, and you can tell that by the round holes the way it's spaced. Um, but yeah, I would definitely yeah be running this intake. But uh, if I was running a 351, I'd probably be running something different. Um, I'm actually running the uh, Elbrock RPM2 air gap, and I probably would have had a Edelbrock RPM2 intake forward. Let's see what I get here with that. All right, so this is actually the intake that I'm running in my truck right now. I mean, it's definitely not cheap. I mean, I actually, the reason this is like $1,000 on, this is like a 30, that's even, that's a 5.01, one, but the 351 one's even more expensive, but I actually powder coated mine. I did a video on that, but I got mine for like like less than 500 bucks, I think. I can't remember, but I got an eBay was used. Well, no, actually it was new, but they had dropped it in shipping. It had like a couple dents on it that I was able to file out. Um, but yeah, this starts at 1500 I, I probably would have gone on a, a performer, um, a little bit lower, you know, like the runners would have been a little bit smaller. But uh, yeah, because they really don't. You can't with with an, with, a, with the Bronco. Oh, phone's ringing again. Busy, busy day. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Phone keeps on ringing. I keep on getting sidetracked. Um, I work in IT, so I have to I have troubleshoot networking problems and communications problems. Um, Okay, so where was I at? Okay, so intake manifold selection. So this is actually what I'm currently running, and uh, it's it's pretty credible. I mean, it's pretty fast. I, I mean, I guess I maybe I made a couple of videos on how fast my truck is, or I can't remember, but it's it's insanely fast. Um, like more multi-port fuel injection is the way to go. So I mean, if you're still running a carburetor, or if you're thinking about like doing like a Phi Tech system, or like uh, like the whole I used to have a Holy Terminator. Um, when I upgraded to like my uh, multi-port, like night and day difference, like there's no comparison. So if you can go multi-port fuel injection, that's the way to go, 100%, no doubt. Um, you just have so much more control. You know what I mean? It's it's just it's incredible. So, but yeah, I mean, if I did actually have to go back to a carburetor again, um, actually my favorite was the Elbrock. I mean, if you do the, I've made a video on it. Like one of my first videos I ever made was an Edelbrock uh, carburetor 4x4 mods. And um, actually, I had that, that 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 carburetor. I had totally dialed in. I mean, I could totally off road like crazy angles, and I never had a problem with it. You know, I mean, as long as you keep your float levels low and you block off the two sections of the bowl, you know, you get the spring loaded needles and seats. I mean, that thing can actually and, and lower your fuel pressure. You know, because you can't go off roading with high fuel pressure. You know, you have to like lower down to like 1.5 psi. And the carburetor kicks ass. So, but uh, yeah, multi port is the way to go. So. Um, skip the Phi Tech if you can. <laughs> well, I mean, Phi Tech is all right. I mean, it's better than carburetor, but it's not going to be as good as multi-port fuel injection. So, um, yeah, like when I converted over, my throttle response, torque was like, it was like a totally different truck. It was like a modern truck. It was crazy how much more responsive it was. All right, so now if you are going the EFI route, then you're going to have to worry about... Uh, um, the throttle body and I'm actually running a 351 too and I'm actually running a 65 millimeter throttle body and one of the issues is uh, if your throttle body is too big it's gonna allow too much air in too fast and it could bog um, also it's hard to control it off idle, you know what I mean? I, I prefer a uh, 65 millimeter for, for any sort of like low RPM operation because it gives you more, it allows you to use the full range of, of the throttle body. And 65 millimeter is more than enough to supply all your air at 5,500 RPM. I mean, you only need a 70 millimeter throttle body or bigger if you're in a race car using high RPM and you need lots of air. 
So 65 millimeters should be fine for a 302 and fine for a 351. So uh, yeah, don't go too big because I can, I can, I, my my manifold will support 70 millimeter, but I, I only want 65 because I mean you don't want it to be so touchy where it's like you barely touch it. You want more you want more control. So. I'm actually running a professional products one, like a cheaper one. I think I bought it, like paid like 50 bucks for it, and then I powder coated it black. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just I've had actually a few people ask me about my engine and how I did it, and like what the best engine combo you think is for for a, a Bronco. But I, I like I said, I've had four different engines over the years, and when I was younger, when I was a kid, in my my 20s, I was all about the race car stuff. So, but actually, my my truck sucked back then. Because it used to bog off idle, and it, was, it sucked because I had, all, I, I had big heads. I had, like, 202 valves. I had, like, 210 cc runners, like, single-plane intake. And it was just it was just ridiculous. Yeah, it hauled ass. It was, this was when I had the 289, too, by the way. Well, no, I guess I've had, I've had multiple engines. So the 289 was actually pretty cool with the supercharger. Um, I'll, I'll put my blower picture up here in a couple seconds. You'll see it. But when I had the 289 with the supercharger, that that was the only time that I was actually, because the 289 is a high, a short stroke engine, I could really rev it to high RPMs. Um, but yeah, that was fun, a little blower. But my actually, I, I jacked the blower up when I was up in Big Bear one time, and my truck overheated, and the blower rotors, the 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 roots, the, it was a root style blower, one BNM 144, and the rotors were hitting each other, scuffing each other up as they're spinning around. So. After that, I, I uh, yeah, I took the supercharger back off, and I, I basically went started thinking about 351 because um, I wanted more torque, you know, because the blower was awesome. Um, but yeah, it wasn't really, it didn't really do for the blower wasn't really good at uh, on the trails very much, but it was really fun on the street. Um, and I guess the last thing I, I guess I'll talk about is um, so I know I go on kind of rants. You know, I'm obviously not a sales guy, um, but uh, it's torque converter. So I mean, I've tried many, many different torque converters. Uh, I think I've tried like three or four in there, and surprisingly, the the best torque converter I had was stock torque converter, or just a little bit above it. You know, depending on what your gear ratio is. But uh, I'm running 410 gears of mine, AOD transmission, and even when I had the C4 transmission there, I had the best luck. With the stock torque converter, man, because I wanted to lock up like right away, especially on trails. You don't want to be running. If your torque converter is too loose and you're on trails, you're going to be slipping a lot and generating lots of heat. So you don't want to be slipping because slipping generates heat. So I don't know. Hopefully this helps somebody. I know I'm going on crazy rants. I mean, I don't even know if I make sense, but hopefully this does make sense to somebody. But cool. Yeah. I mean. Uh, like I said, my Bronco hauls ass. Oh yeah, then why I'm also <laughs> lost my train of thought. I'm also running a holy uh, HP uh, I'm running the uh, holy uh, HP fuel injection system. So originally I had a holy terminator, but the cool thing about the terminator was it, the holy terminator is basically just an HP ECU with a different wiring harness and like a throttle body. So I was able to retain my, I kept my ECU and basically bought a, a multi-port fuel injection wiring harness and I was able to convert it over to, to, to multi-port. But I, I was able to use the same ECU, the same wiring. So the swap was actually pretty basic. I just changed my manifold, got a different harness, and I was back in business. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you later. Cool.